have been talking about the word of God, the importance of the word of God. So remain standing as I read the word of God. Go to book of Joshua in the Old Testament. I'm reading from New King James. We're going to read verses 1 through 9. I'm glad you are listening. Because some of you are still trying to find Joshua. Chapter 1. Joshua 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you as I said to Moses. Then he gives the boundaries in verse 4. Every nation should have boundaries. I'm going to stay focused here. Verse 5, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, not forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their father to give them. Only... Be strong, very courageous. See how many times he said to be courageous. That you may be observed to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand, to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. Folks, you have to prosper no matter where you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your... And then... Some people are success, but it's not a good success. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Verse 18, whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you commanded him shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Go ahead and have your seats, please. If you notice, the Lord is talking to Joshua, verse 7, verse 6, 7, 9, 18, to be courageous. Very courageous. So I want to talk to you today, the source of courage. The source of courage for us to obey. Let me define courage. Courage is not absent of fear, but the mastery of fear. Let me say it again. Courage is not the absence of fear, but the mastery of fear. You know, Chuck Colson, 
the man of God who started prison ministry, he said, courage is staying on your post and doing your duty. In the face of fear or any opposition or any obstacles. Let me ask you a question. Look in your life and answer this question. Have you done any courageous thing? Look back. Think. You know, we always see this on the news, you will see the house is on fire. And here comes one young fireman. Goes inside, comes back with a baby. And we say, wow, he was very courageous. Have you done anything courageous like that? Or a soldier in a war, the enemy throws a grenade, the guy catches it, throws back. That's a courage. The grenade comes off, loses his hand, but he still runs to protect his fellow soldiers. What have you done that is so courageous? Let me read it again. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. Isn't that interesting? They were grieving, mourning for 30 days. And Joshua was with Moses for 40 years seeing all the awesome things Moses did. And now Joshua is sitting there crying. I tell you why he was sitting, because the Lord told him to arise. If you're already standing up, God will tell you to stand up. Not only that, to this new generation, Huh? When I go to pastor's conference, they introduce, oh, here comes the general of Lord, huh? Here comes the mighty, powerful apostle. Or, oh. but look at here what God says. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, when you die, let it be said, you serve the Lord and you died as a servant of the Lord, not as a general. Amen. We give our same titles. Oh, I'm a general because I intercede. I'm an intercessor general. Uh, show me in the Bible. We like titles. Leave that alone. And when you think, when the man who was on the go with God, he died. Look, when a man of God dies, nothing of God dies. And when you think that's the end, God speaks. Somebody say amen. amen. All the hope is gone. Oh Lord, what are we going to do? God promised all these promises to us. And now he gone. 
That's the reason I have said from this pulpit, we will not build this church on a man, we will build this church on the word of God because man is not eternal, only the word of God is eternal. We will not build this church on the gifts and graces. Uh -uh. We will build this church on the word of God because gifts comes, gifts ceases. And isn't that interesting? Hundreds and hundreds of people, and God don't speak to nobody. Read it. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass, the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant. Ha, ha, ha. It tells you, if you don't serve, don't ask for a position. A lot of people want to stand in a line. Oh, I'm waiting for him to go so I can be. Praying for somebody to die so you can get the position. But Bible says God speaks to only those who serve another man. If you be faithful serving someone else, God will give you your own. But we don't want to serve, we want our own. You are very quiet today in this Methodist church, but that is all right. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Stop crying. Look at your friend next to there with a smile says, stop crying. We got a job to do, folks. Man is dead, but God is not. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. All the promises of God are yea and amen in him through Jesus Christ. What God spoke to you, he will watch over his word to perform it. And I'm here to tell you, like Jeremiah said, he will hasten his word. He will spit it up. What took 10 years will take one year. What took one year will take one hour. But where are the servants of God? Moses, my servant is dead, now therefore arise, go over Jordan, you and all these people, to the land which I am giving. Folks, God already has given us. All the promises of God are yea and amen in him through Jesus Christ. Satan is already defeated. But you know what we say as a human being? Oh man, he was so great. Nobody can fill his shoes. Lord, don't talk about Moses' shoes. Stop comparing people. Oh, he was so big. Now he's gone. Nobody can step. Who told you that lie? Say it. I got my own shoes. Put it on. Ain't there something in a, in a, what is it? In Exodus, the third chapter. His master, Moses, standing on the holy ground. Moses, take up your shoes. But to this guy, he said, put your shoes on, my man. Folks, why you took your shoes off? You know when you take your shoes off? I'm going to rest now. Ooh, I got that two-minute shoe or two-hour Sunday shoes. I'll take it off so I can chill. Put your shoes on. Moses is gone. You put your shoes on. Listen to me. God said, I gave you all this land, but you got to walk. If you don't walk the land, you cannot have the land. No, 
Somebody going to give it to you. Ain't nobody going to give you nothing. Get up and go walk. Every place that the soul of your food will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. Wait a minute. He said to Moses, he told to Abraham. So all you're doing, you're just collecting what the Lord promised your daddy. What God promised your grandfather. Say, I'm a collector. Verse 5. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Did you hear me? Yeah. He said, be courageous. But you are afraid of man. And who is he talking to? Joshua. How many of you remember the message I had preached? I am no grasshopper. Yeah. Oh, you, you don't remember that, do you? That's our problem. This is the guy, Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. Ten guys wearing a t-shirt, I'm a grasshopper. Joshua and Caleb say, I am no grasshopper. Yeah. Meaning, you should not be afraid of any man. Yes, we respect people. Amen. Yes, we respect people. But the way, the way I am wired, huh? Folks, fear no man, but fear God. Amen. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor forsake you. Then he said, be strong, be strong, be strong. Okay, let me break it down for you. The source of courage. And you know, you can, you can go in the Bible and talk about David. Remember the courageous David? Everybody was saying, oh man, Goliath so big. You can knock him down. And David say, he is so big, I can't miss him. <laughs> courage. How did David got that courage? You come to me with spear and sword. I come to you in the name of God Jehovah whom you defile. So when you go out, you going in the name of the Lord not in the name of man. Amen. All right. So I've got about what? Three points here. The source of my courage. And let me tell you something. Courage is an inner conviction. Inner conviction provides courage. So before we talk about courage, let me ask you a question. Are you a man of conviction? Based on the word of God. If you believe the word of God, you should have a strong conviction. Especially in these Walk generation. There is only one God. Do we have a conviction? Or do you agree with all, all the roads lead to Rome? Do you have conviction? Jesus is the only way, the truth and life. Let me ask you a question. You know, this morning I got a text from Joyce saying, Joselle gave a birth to the baby. Okay. My first question is this. What is it? A boy or a girl? So when they are born, you have a gender 
revealing party. Blue, boy, pink, girl, but how dare you tell me when he becomes eight or nine and ten, he can choose what he wants to be. You are a liar! And the pastors don't have conviction. But in this church, Covenant is a conviction church. We call an apple an apple and an orange an orange. There is no mix in here. We call it the way we see it. Like I say, I'm 73 and a half years old. What you all going to do? I got 47 more years. To trouble the devil. Do you have conviction? Do you teach your children conviction? You know, Father's Day is coming. What do you teach them, kids? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You have to have a conviction to have courage. Come what may. I can face it. Huh? The whole world is against you. Smile and say, I'm against the whole world. Ha, ha, ha. If God for me, who can be against me? Democrats? No. Republicans? No. It don't matter who. God gives me conviction. Number one, the source of my faith comes from my assignment and my mission from God. I told you about the firefighter. There, there are about 100 men watching the fire. How come he's the only one running in? Because your mission, your assignment, will call you to have courage. My assignment, prophet unto the nation, pastor of Covenant Family Church, that should give me conviction and courage. When you or you or you going through something, I step in and say, uh-uh, devil, you can't. Why? My courage comes from my assignment. Do you know what is your assignment in the body of Christ? See, if you don't know your assignment, you won't have courage. The fireman runs into the house because, hey, I was called for. I was born to be a firefighter. Now, I got to do what I was born for. Do you know what is your assignment? Oh, I'm just a mother, huh? You're just a mother. That's the best assignment anybody can get. Put their hand on the little pool and say, you are blessed. You be the great. You will make a difference. Joshua, I am giving you an assignment. Stop talking about Moses. You have your assignment. I have my assignment. Let us do what we are called to do. If you don't know what you're called to do, ask God. No, I'm just here. No, you're not here. You're here with a purpose. Amen. And take pride in who you are. My wife always tells me that the men of God are marked no matter where we go. We marked. No matter where am I, 
the number one question I always get is, who are you? Because people are talking noise, so negative, so negative, so negative. I say, no! Oh, who are you? Let me tell you who am I. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. I'm the born again child of the Lord. I'm a pastor of Covenant Family Church. I'm prophet unto the nation. It shall be exactly what I say, not what they say. You don't believe? Read in Acts the 27th chapter, huh? There is a big storm. All the fear is gripping. There was no hope. Hope against hope. Paul stood there. A, what is it? Conviction. He said, folks, it will be exactly what I said. Why I believe God. Last night, God sent his angel and spoke to me. All is well. Let me tell you something, folks. Don't worry about what is going in the politics. Some of you are glued to this mess. I am telling you who is going to be the president. Let me tell you something who is going to be the president. What God wants him to be the president. It don't matter. Because God is going to set it up the way he wants to so his son can come on home to take us heaven. Folks, do you understand? Your assignment gives you source of courage. Your assignment is to serve. Shut your mouth and serve. But the servers are complainers. Oh, it is so quiet. I'll be done in 10 minutes. Don't complain. Just serve. How come I got to do it all? Because that's your assignment, that's your mission. Are we all all right? Are you full of courage? I can tell you stories, some of the courageous things I have done after I have become a pastor. Oh, I did some stupid thing, which I call courageous when I was back home a gang banging. I have done some courageous things as a pastor of this church. And again, I am not tooting my own tooth. But let me tell you something some of you don't know. If I had not taken a courageous turn, this church wouldn't be even here today. Why? Courage comes from your assignment. God said in 1980, this is your building. I will make you go all over the world from this building. End of the story. I believe God. Number two. My courage comes because I want to obey God. I want to please God. The one who called me, the one who gave me assignment, I want to please God because on that day when I stand before God, all I want to hear is, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to do well. Like I say, you go to school, do well. Why go to school to flunk? You can stay home and flunk. You go to work, give your best shot at work. Oh, everybody's messing around. You're not everybody. You're different. You have a calling. You have an assignment. God plants you on that job so you can shine like a... Mm. I want to be obedient to God. I want to do what he has called me to do. I cannot tell you Sunday after Sunday to do, obey God, and I myself will not do it. Amen. 
One of these days I'm going to preach. What will be your last words before you die? Your last words should be, I have obeyed God. Let it be said on your tomb, he was a courageous man. The man who obeyed God. Against all, folks, as long as you obey God, there will be trouble, there will be problem. I am not telling you, once you decide to go with God, every uh -uh, uh -uh, whole hell will follow you. But I tell you one thing, in this world you have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome. He didn't say, I have overcome the trouble. He said, I have overcome the whole world. Let me ask you a question. What is your assignment? Number two. Your courage comes for willing to be obedient to God. Listen to me. Paul says, I have run the race. I have finished my course. I have kept my faith. That is your assignment complete. You cannot graduate until you have done your assignment. And like my good friend Pastor Adebo will say, you cannot die until you have finished your assignment. That's why I get up and say, Lord, let's do what you have called me to do because I ain't going to die today. That's the one thing I'm not afraid of death. I'm not afraid of death. You know why? My assignment is not done and then nobody can kill me. Amen. Some of you need to wake up. My last point. Your source of courage comes from your assignment. Source of courage comes from knowing you want to fulfill the calling of God in your life. And number three, courage comes from knowing God is with me. Remember God reminded Moses, uh, Joshua, Joshua, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. Presence of God. The message that I had preached on Joseph, I say this over and over in Joseph. Whether he was in a dry hole, whether he was in a potiphar house, whether he was in a prison, there is one statement over and over about Joseph. God was with Joseph. So when you know God is with me, you be courageous. You will be courageous. Isaiah said, Isaiah 7, 14, talk about Jesus' birth and say, his name shall be called. Thank you. Say it loud. Emmanuel. God with us. Paul comes out and say, if God be for us, who can be against us? It will not be by might, will not be by power, but by the Spirit of God. Huh? God was with them, God is in you. So how come we are so scary cats? But I don't know what will happen to the economy. I don't put my trust in this world's economy. I know my God. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Let me say it again. God will supply all that I need. When I say, our Father which art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. doesn't say if the dollar is strong. 
doesn't say stock market is up and down. Huh? Folks, put your trust in God. God will take care of me. You being evil know how to give good things to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give good things to his children? Now let me close. So to Joshua, the Lord gave boundaries from this to this, from this to this. Gave the boundary and say, you can possess this because I'm with you. Come in the New Testament. What did he say? Go into all the world and preach the gospel. So my boundary is not this. My boundary is the whole world. And he said, go, I am with you until the end of ages. I am with you. So my message today is, are you courageous? For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Mm-mm, folks. But love and power and a sound mind. I can do. When I am weak. See you know all these scriptures folks. Go and do it. And God will give you your possession. Would you stand please? Lift your hands towards heaven. My God and my Lord, in the name of Jesus. Isaiah said, talking about Jesus, spirit of might will be upon him. Pray this prayer. Lord, Lord. baptize me baptize. with the spirit of might. That I will speak speak your word word. with boldness boldness. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I am am mighty man. I'm a man of valor. valor. I am am courageous courageous saint saint. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now go occupy till he comes. In Jesus' name, amen.